And now for something completely different. Uh, I've always been intrigued by the sound of bluegrass music and uh, those fiddle melodies, those old, some called old timey fiddle tunes. And you know, they played on the mandolin as well. You know, the mandolin, it, by the way, is a violin's uh, sister instrument. It's fretted equivalent. They are both tuned the same way, which is in perfect fifths, very different than the guitar. If you were to play the open strings of the violin or mandolin on a guitar, you would get this chord. G, D, A, E. Sounds like an orchestra tuning up, right? Have you ever heard that sound? So there is some overlap with the guitar's register, but not much. You know, the, um, the G is the same as, the low string is the same as the guitar's G string. Then it goes D, A, and then E. So a few years ago, I came across a book of fiddle tunes, and it was written just in standard notation, no tablature. Um, but fortunately, being a sight reader, a trained sight reader, I was able to copy the notes and tried to figure out some of these old tunes, these standard traditional songs on guitar. And I was interested in doing it, but it was kind of challenging because there were a lot of string crosses involved. You know, the different tuning facilitates uh, more acrobatic note contours, say, you know, more arpeggios and everything on, on the violin and mandolin. So I'm going to show you today a cool trick I came up with, which involves using a capo at the 12th fret. So now I'm going to have my super high, you know, uh, piccolo guitar. And I can do it on the 12th fret because I'm using a double cutaway solid body guitar that has a thin neck joint here. If you're doing an acoustic, you're going to have that wide heel at your neck joint. You're probably going to have to go to the 10th fret and just play everything a whole step lower maybe even the ninth fret, depending on how fat the, the heel is there. So I'm going to show you a song called The Eighth of January. It's one of the more popular bluegrass standards, and I'm going to play it an octave higher. So here we go. Okay, so as you can see, playing everything up to 12th fret, pretending that's the nut, and I'm um, playing as if I'm in the key of, well, yeah, I'm in the key of D, because it's exactly an octave higher. And what's nice about having the frets so close together is that you can manage to play more notes on each string, which is a big plus, because um, the big challenge is when you're crossing strings and trying to alternate pick, what they call flat picking, it can be tricky if you're doing that inside the strings picking, where the pick has to change direction you know, if you're going like this. That's difficult, but going is much easier. So what I'm doing here, um, you'll notice with the fingerings I'm using, in some cases, moving a note over to a different string, like this F sharp note here. So for instance, I'm gonna start out. I'm playing it up here instead of playing it here. I could just go. But when you try to play that at a faster tempo, it becomes doggedly, you know, arduous. So I'm doing this. It'd be kind of hard to do down here, but still doable. So I'm going. A slight position shift. And I'm arranging the fingerings so that every string cross uh, occurs with an advantageous, like if I'm going to a lower string, I'm doing an upstroke, which sends me to the direction of the next string. Down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down. You notice I'm not doing literally alternate picking because that would mean going down, up, down, up, regardless of the rhythm. What I'm doing is uh, when I'm playing eighth notes, when I'm picking the eighth notes, one and two and three and four, and 
that's them going down up. There are a couple of quarter notes thrown in there. So for the quarter notes, you just use a consecutive downstroke. That's kind of the, the general rule here. Okay, so. Then it repeats. That's the A section. And then for the B section, I'm using the open D string instead of playing a D here. That's pretty neat. I'm sneaking in the open B note so that I can kind of travel. You know, see how I'm kind of like drifting from second position up to, I guess, fourth or fifth? Here I use the open B, I use the open G, and also the open D string. Whereas previously I had fretted those same notes, okay? It's not uh, not doable down here, but it makes it easier up here because you're kind of more approximating the scale length of a mandolin. And then it repeats with a different ending. And then that section repeats. And then you can go to the top. There's a little finger slide in there, by the way. Right there, yeah. The pinky slides from what would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and the sixth fret relative to the capo up to the seventh fret. Down, up, down, up, down. If I tried to do that, say I switched the polarity of the picking, I went, yeah. You'll find that a lot. When you play these three notes per string scale patterns and everything, a lot of times you notice that your right hand seems to get hung up. It's because you're, you're doing that inside the strings picking, you know, say, um, that's hard, but it's easy. So what I, what I basically just did here was just arranged all the string crosses, and that means sometimes throwing a note, like I'm playing a D note here sometimes, and I'm playing it here sometimes. Um, sometimes I'm playing the open B, sometimes I'm playing it at the fourth fret, you know, the way you would tune the guitar. Same thing with the G. I use the open G, and then I use the G at the fifth fret here. So a good way to practice this is to start off slowly and try to get that swing rhythm, ba, 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 which is based on an underlying current of triplets. But you're leaving out the middle note. So you're going. As opposed to playing it as even eighth notes, or what are known as straight eighth notes, would be. That sounds kind of like stiff and classical, right? This is uh, like bluegrass swing. All right, now I'm gonna show you the backing chords behind the melody. Okay, here's like a suggested bluegrass style accompaniment. It's basically just using the chords D, G, and A. And I'm doing that down, down, up. You know, boom, cha cha, boom, cha cha, it's like a train rhythm. But I'm also throwing in an alternating bass line. You know, like root fifth on the D chord. And it goes to G. Notice how I jump from the bass note to the top three strings, down, and then down, up, and then hit the fifth of G, which is D. And then it goes to A. So with the bass line, I'm going, you know, just the same way like a string bass player would. So you're kind of combining that with the guitar. So here's, here's how it goes. One, two, one, two, three, four. Section. 
that's a pretty useful thing to know. That's like a standard, straight up bluegrass style compliment. So get another guitar player at your next hoe down, and uh, you know, one of you play that, the other one put the capo on 12th fret, and you'll sound like a mandolin guitar duo. Yeehaw. <laughs>